Fear not what you hear and enjoy that which you see. Greetings to you, ladies and gentlemen, and boys and girls, and mothers and fathers, and people, and teachers especially. I am the professor, Julius Sumner Miller, and physics is my business, and enchantment therewith. We are doing some wonderful things with electric charges. And I am led to say, by way of introduction, that when I was a little boy, a certain professor at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology developed a machine which came to be known as the Van de Graaff electrostatic generator, of which we have one. And those he made were enormous, 30 feet in diameter, on huge supporting columns mounted on railroad cars so that their distance between could be changed, closer or farther. And the charge that they could develop was hundreds of millions of volts. And great things could be done. Since inside the chamber the field is free, a laboratory can be set up. Or an x-ray machine can be put between one and another and x-rays produced. So here we have a Van de Graaff generator, and I'd better write that name so you always get it properly spelled, Van de Graaff, G-R-A-A-F. <clears throat> and so we have one. Now its mechanism is too much for me to explain, but the principle dates from Thales, 500 BC, who observed that when amber was stroked, it acquired the property of attracting to itself light bits of straw and dust. So we have a motor which turns a belt which deposits on the sphere some electric charge. Proof. I am going to put on here a piece of fur and I am going to start the generator and certain strange electrostatic forces arise. Watch it. Oh, I just love that. Now because the charge is abundant and the potential very high, I have to be very careful and circumspect. I want to do that again because it is fun. If we could have it, an absolutely symmetric piece of fur, it would hover at such a distance, supported by Coulomb forces. But watch it. Ah, that's good. Now I have another device which I have named the Mad Professor's Head. See, some pieces of paper each of which will acquire the same charge and the mutual repulsion will drive them apart. Watch it. There we are. There we are. The mad professor's head. And now I have to be very circumspect. Very circumspect. Oh, oh, oh there was a little stuff there. And I, I, I not all your hearts, a little set of Twitter. You're all enjoying that. And I can say what I think, but I won't. Now, <clears throat> here we have some plastic stuff, styrofoam, in a lucite vessel. And I'm going to put it there. And the same thing will happen. The same thing. Mutually charged stuff will be repelled by mutually charged stuff. And we'll have an electrostatic shower. There we are. Oh, don't I love that. Don't I love that? But I wouldn't get in there? Well, indeed. Indeed, when Peter von Muschenbrock, a Dutchman, invented the Leyden jar, he was accidentally shocked one time, and what did he say? I would not take such a shock for the kingdom of France. Beautiful thing. And so, here we are. In the 21st century, nearly, doing things that bear on the fundamental principles first brought forth by the ancient Greeks. And so our culture is one with theirs. Intellectually, in government, since it was there that democracy was born. And I urge you to go read about Socrates and Plato and Aristotle, Anaxagoras, Anaximenes, Epicurus, Aristophanes, Euripides, and the great, the great ones of that culture. I'll be here again. Thank you for listening.